Welcome back. You might recall that many videos ago I did a video about uh, the Federation, Federated Location of Cohorts, or Flock, that was produced uh, by Google. Uh, now there is a new approach, uh, or actually two new approaches by Google. And this, uh, I think, is a good time for us to just reflect on things. And uh, rather than kicking up um, a drama about this, try to think it through and see if we had to offer constructive feedback, what might we offer? So thanks to Beta News Wayne Williams for publishing this article alerting us uh, to the latest changes. Uh, Google I.O., their conference, uh, kicks off today. And while the search giant might want us to believe it cares about our privacy, most people are rightly wary. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, those are some words. Uh, yeah, uh, people, I think it's right to take any bit of technology with a bit of skepticism, uh, particularly if it's hard to discover what's going on. But yeah, the, Wayne is, opinion that, um, or is of the opinion that uh, Google gathers a lot of information and some people are wary about this. Uh, so Wayne promotes here DuckDuckGo as a privacy-first alternative to Google Search. There are other privacy-first alternatives. Uh, DuckDuckGo is quite popular. Um, but yeah, that company as well offers an extension to help secure your browser and so forth, assuming you are using Chrome as your browser. Um, but yeah, then of course there are other browsers you've probably heard about brave and how they deliver ads to you differently and you are participating in some sort of reward program for that to the best of my understanding uh, but anyway topics is a new tracking method de uh, designed to replace the federated learning of cohorts uh, whereas fledge is a new ad retargeting method where Google uh, plans to automatically enable for many users. Now, I guess it's worth noting that for any protocol to work, there's a connection between a browser and a web server. And there could be other pieces on the web server end of things. And I don't know if there could be other things on the browser side of things. It kind of surprised me if a browser depended on many other local programs or network located programs or things like that but i could be surprised anyway see so yeah, topics is designed to replace flock and fledge is a new ad retargeting method and so yeah uh, wayne goes to mention the blog here that if you're a chrome user you might be surprised to find that you're automatically entered in the new technology so one solution he proposes is don't use Chrome. Another is install this extension. Third is if you are using Chrome, um, that you can opt out of this anyway. So what starts as a very dramatic uh, headline, punchline headline, is uh, not necessarily supported by the rest of the article, aside from the fact that, hey, if you downloaded this browser, from Google, this thing that's called Chrome, and now you're surprised that it opts into this? Um, well, that's on you, I guess, but um, yeah, if you, I think it benefits people to be in control not just of their software, but also the source code for that software. Uh, some day, some year, some millennium, we'll eventually get there, but as it stands today, people are pretty content if they can trust where software came from and trust its contents. And there's entire debates about that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, if you're using Chrome, you are opted into this until you opt out of it. So there are various ways to opt out, first of which is don't use Chrome. Yeah, and then there's the mention of an extension, and then there's mention you could also opt out through Google itself. And so I think rather than delve immediately into this further, 
let's take a step back and think about uh, some earlier things that have been done. That Google years ago made it easier for you to obtain a data dump of the information that Google knows about your account or knows about you. So they provided a way that you could download a complete list of everything that they've collected on your user and everything they know about you, um, at least in the way that's tied to your user. So I find that that's laudable, that like they didn't have to do that until maybe the EU made them do it. The EU's laws have much more to do with whether or not you're able to force them to uh, expunge things related to you and the right to be forgotten and such. But, um, yeah, no, I think they're being transparent about the things they're collecting about you. And they're doing this kind of out in the open. Um, and so let's, again, rather than delving into the details of this beta news article, let's take a quick look at uh, what Google itself has to say as an introduction to uh, topics and to Fledge. So here on, I think the keyword is Google's blog. I could be mistaken, but Vinay Goel, their product director for Privacy Sandbox of Chrome, um, is mentioning here that they started this initiative. I should zoom in a little bit so we can read this more easily. They started this initiative as, uh, to improve web privacy for users while also giving publishers, creators, and other developers tools that are required to build thriving businesses. And he characterizes that as ensuring a safe and healthy web. And he mentions, well, yeah, advertising is critical to many businesses, especially from Google's perspective. They believe advertising is important, that it's part of their business model. <laughs> believe it or not. And they mentioned, so it's a key way to support access to free content online, where otherwise somebody would have to pay who knows how much to keep a server running. And now it's supported by ads and some strategy that incorporates ads, but might also involve subscriptions or other things to suppress ads. Um, those things wouldn't be possible if not for online advertising is Google's claim. Um, so today they're announcing topics, the Privacy Sandbox proposal for interest-based advertising. So uh, it's formed by their widespread community from their earlier trials and replaces the earlier proposal. So yeah, for what it's worth earlier uh, to opt out of this sort of thing would have required web servers to um, indicate an interest list of an empty set, meaning that uh, the web server is indicating that uh, proactively that it does not collect this sort of information from a browser, therefore the browser should not submit interests and topics and that sort of thing. Uh, so today they're announcing topics, which, uh, yeah, works in a similar fashion. Your browser determines things uh, like fitness or travel and transportation, etc., that represent uh, the top interests for that week based on the browsing history. These are only kept for three weeks and older topics are deleted. They're selected entirely from your device, from your browser, without any external servers, also including without external like Google servers. So, um, yeah, this all originates from within your browser. And, you know, I didn't completely track how Brave does things. I am modestly curious how this is different than what Brave does, or if this is in quite a similar vein. But, uh, yeah, when you visit a participating site, the topics uh, implementation picks three subjects, three topics, one from each of the past three weeks to share with the site and its advertising partners, etc., etc. So, yeah, and uh, most importantly, or more importantly, the topics are carefully or thoughtfully curated to exclude sensitive categories such as gender or race. So, 
yeah, again, Google's trying to do this out in the open, trying to do this in a way that receives positive PR. And uh, so far, I haven't seen anything, any reason yet to condemn things. But yeah, um, but yeah, they provide the websites with your topics of interest, which gives online businesses half a chance to be able to uh, give things that you're interested in. I suppose Brave doesn't live in itself in this particular way. Um, but anyway, uh, to learn more, you can see uh, an overview or read the full technical explanation. And they say soon they'll launch a developer trial of topics in Chrome that includes user controls, etc. So, yeah, this, um, let's see. The busy time for the privacy sandbox. They recently worked with the UK's Competition and Market Authority to offer revised commitments to ensure proposals are developed in a way that works for the entire ecosystem. And later this week, they'll be sharing more details about Fledge. Now, when they say later this week, bear in mind what we read from the article that Google I.O. just launched. So, uh, yeah, I think that's why they're spacing things out throughout the week, so that they have adequate time to progress through, proceed through each topic uh, as part of their conference. But yeah, the Privacy Sandbox is one of their more ambitious efforts, so they say. And they're profoundly grateful for the engagement, feedback, and partnership from those who have participated, I guess, in Flock and in providing feedback so far. So, uh, again, yeah, I don't really see any reason to condemn this per se. Um, so then I navigated over to some of the technical documentation for... I think we have an adequate high-level explanation of topics itself. Topics seems to be pretty straightforward. Your browser keeps track of things you're interested in and lets the web server know. Web server can pass along those very select topics. One topic per week for the last three weeks uh, passes these along to advertisers. And so far, there doesn't seem to be anything nefarious about that. There doesn't seem to be anything personally identifying about it. And we'll see whether or not advertisers are happy with such a deal. But, you know, it seems reasonable at face value. Do I want to receive targeted ads? Not really. But some people might. So we'll leave that open. Maybe it'll be a much more positive thing than I imagine it to be. Um, so what is Fledge? And they say the more details are going to surface later throughout the week. But it's proposal to serve remarketing and custom audience use cases. Designs that cannot be used by third parties to track uh, the browsing information across or behavior across sites. Uh, so this API enables on-device auctions by, by the browser to choose relevant ads from websites the user has previously visited. See, so topics seems pretty benign. Fledge seems like a way that Google can do something more similar to what it's familiar with. And bear in mind, again, Brave does similar things to the best of my understanding, where people opt in to receiving ads and they get paid for it. And, here, maybe you're not getting paid for it, but you're still opting into this kind of thing by using the browser unless you opt out of it. And not everybody's going to have the wherewithal to do that. So Fledge is the first experiment to be implemented in Chromium. And then there's this turtle dove family of proposals. Uh, again, I'm amused that like not only do they let you know about topics in Fledge, but here, they let you know... There's this entire family of experiments that they intend to try out. They're putting this all out in the open, letting you know these are the things they will be considering. Um, so whether or not you like it, they're letting you know. <laughs> they're being as transparent as they can be here, right? So, yeah, the fudge life cycle. Yeah, so it uses interest groups to enable sites to display relevant ads. For example, when uh, an interest owner uh, can ask the user's browser to add membership for the interest group. And so, 
Yeah, you can participate in certain ad interests based on which sites you've visited. Um, yeah, these auctions take place in the browser and I guess can determine which things, uh, which ads are worth targeting you with. And this is not too dissimilar from other browsers. I've mentioned Brave, but I believe Edge also advertises things. Um, so a user visits a site that sells ad space. The ad space seller for the site can use Fledge to run an ad auction, etc. So here there's a notion that a site uh, can define who the seller is, I believe. I, to the best of my understanding, I've not looked, not probed too deeply, but I've heard that these kinds of uh, services only work for servers and sites that enable ad sales. And so, a site like Lee Chess, a site like um, Lee Shogi, or other free sites out there could entirely opt out of this without tremendous effort, to the best of my understanding. They're, like, I've not heard anything suggesting that um, sites need to go through tremendous pains to disable information collection. And again, this protocol, while it stands like right now, the ad um, interest group owner can ask uh, for your participation and then your browser auctions off ads based on which interest groups you have, are uh, integrated in or enlisted in and yeah the navigator run ad auction um, produces code that scores the ads and so forth and the bid with the highest score wins the auction to show the ad to you so um yeah, this is a way that I'm sure things will change. They, Google mentions there's a series of uh, experiments they're interested in running. And we'll see how far they get with these before they get tons of user feedback. We'll see if Chrome remains as immensely popular as it is today. Um, you know, I am somewhat amused by the notion that not every computer is fully secure. So it's entirely possible that some of this implementation, advertisers as well as uh, users and other folks might figure out there's some corner cases that don't make sense. Like if you were to go visit a friend's house and their kid or something touches your computer and like visits some website suddenly you've been participating in you've been enlisted into ads for whatever the kids show as uh, related to advertising so i think eventually um there'll come a point where advertising services and users wise up to the fact that like not everything that you've ever visited, not everything in your search history, etc., necessarily depict things that you care about or want to care about or are even related to you in any way. Um, save for that one time that somebody else was on your computer and did something. And, you know, in the long run, I assume that, like, portable devices um, will get better and better at identifying who's the person connected to the internet at any given time. I assume that's in the future, though I know not how far. Um, but yeah, users can adjust their participation and privacy sandbox in Chrome by enabling or disabling the top level setting in privacy sandbox. And this is browser side, right? So, during initial testing, people will be able to use this high privacy sandbox setting to opt out of Ledge entirely during initial testing. Uh, Chrome plans to allow users to see and manage the list of interest groups they've been added to and uh, across the websites they've been visited and this with the privacy sandbox technologies themselves. User settings may evolve based on feedback uh, from users and regulators and others. So. 
Uh, how can you opt out of Fledge? Uh, so right now you can opt out, oh, uh, both as a site owner you can opt out, or as an individual user you can opt out. Although, uh, yeah, how sites control access, Fledge will eventually require a site to set a permissions policy to allow Fledge functionality to be available. So this will be opt-in as best as I can interpret how it's described right now. Maybe someday Google would change that, but I like, um, at least for now, it sounds like this is an opt-in sort of thing. And uh, yeah, for the first origin trial, this opt-in, <laughs> wait, wait, what? Um, however, to facilitate testing during the first origin trial, this requirement is waived by default. <laughs> really? That's something. Uh, okay. Well, eh. that's mucky, but I get well, how they struggle to get this project off the ground otherwise. <sighs> anyway, um... Yeah, in Chrome you can disable things. You can disable third-party cookies. Uh, and disable this, the sandbox trials altogether. And you can set cookies and other site data to block third-party or block all from this uh, section. Or you could straight up use incognito mode. That's interesting. I wonder if that's always going to work. Um, anyway, so yeah. Google explains that we need ads because that's uh, it keeps the internet going. Anyway, uh, the Fledge experiment aims to move the platform in a state where the user's browser or device, not the advertiser or ad tech platforms, holds the information about what the person's interested in. And yeah, so they say warning: this is not fully deployed, implemented, etc. But anyway, I appreciate that Google, I think their unofficial motto at one point was, don't be evil. And so far, they seem to be doing things out in the open. So kudos to them for that sort of thing. Um, yes, this is some discussion of topics in Fledge. And while Beta News Wayne Williams has some opinions about um, whether or not Google cares about user privacy, I think, like, working within the framework that they operate in, where they deliver ads, that's a large part of what they do. Uh, let's take a hint from Monroe here. So, uh, drawing a parallel back to um, some fun decisions that were made a while ago. Facebook shouldn't choose what stuff they show us to conduct unethical psychological research. Yeah, they should only make those decisions based on uh, how are they doing it before, which is probably ethical. So, I think Monroe helps us put things in perspective here. Uh, go check out his books, What If and What If 2 and so forth. But yeah, I'm amused by this. I think it, yeah, if you put things into this kind of framework here, Given what Google is, what it does, how much influence it has over the internet, um, I think it would be much harder for Google to do anything um, less evil than this. And this is this seems really quite tame. And we'll see uh, to what extent this whole proposal and family of proposals ends up being... Um, what's the word, Can sustainable in the long term, whether or not advertisers demand far more than what Google is giving. But yeah, right now it seems modestly encouraging what they're uh, considering doing, trying to put the controls into the user's hands, into the device's hand uh, control. And that way, uh, two f effects are possible. One, it it's possible to know and audit like what the software actually does because you can compile or decompile the code to see that uh, and two uh, by using other software you are not subject to this it's only Chrome and derivatives thereof which that's a pretty large share of the market it's only those which are affected 
but this might help uh, Chrome retain such a large browser share while people uh, have moved to other browsers like Brave or Edge or, um, yeah, there's just many other browsers to consider. But uh, I think all in all, uh, it seems as innocuous as it can get. Again, we'll see uh, in the long term how things play out. But yeah, this seems not so bad. Um, let me know what I've missed. Let me know what you think. Uh, hope you enjoyed this little discussion here. And thanks for watching.